Hello and welcome to another Exact Hack video brought to you by Actionable Insights. My name is Seth Harrison and I'm the Executive Director here at Actionable Insights. I'm sorry, I haven't been around a ton. You haven't seen a ton of new videos from us. We haven't published as many insight sheets, Xactimate invoicing templates as we would have liked in the last year or so. So I'm sorry, but I come to you with this apology with a gift. Uh, something that is a uh, surprise to some of you and not a surprise to many of you if you follow us on social media and alike. The Actionable Insights team has been building something very, very new inside of Xactimate. We were invited by Veris to collaborate with them and build out a new actionable profile. Now, what is a profile? Many of you have been using profiles like the contractor profile, the carrier profile, or carrier specific profiles like the farmer's profile, the Liberty Mutual profile, the uh, Allstate profile. So the profile that you use matters when you're writing your estimates because profiles are primarily two things. A collection of default settings. How do I want these line items to work in my, when I apply them in my profile? And an inspection engine, which historically really just looked for overages. Where did you potentially double dip my mistake? Where did you do too much of something? One of the classics that I always remember is, you've got a light and a ceiling fan with a light in the same room. Are you sure that's correct? Now, that's what we've had. What I'd like to take some time to share with you today is what actionable profile has. First off, just as a reminder what a profile here is, I'm gonna start a new project and you'll see there's this little profile drop-down box that allows you to define what profile do I want to work in? Well, for today and for the rest of my career, I'm going to be working in the actionable profile. Now, uh, I can create this estimate. I'll let's go ahead and create it. It'll show up here. Um, oh, thank you, thank you. Yes, 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 yes. I'm gonna close you out real quick. All right. So when we're talking about a profile, like the first thing I said was default profile settings matter. So let's take a look at what we intend or we have done with the actionable profile. We want to take the best of both worlds. The contractor profile has a great production report that's not available in other profiles. The carrier profile has the coverages and loss tab for claim info, policy number, and alike. Um, and we've combined those features from Xactimate's default profiles into one. Also in our profile is all the Actionable Insights macros, our Xactimate macros. So if you have been using the Insight Sheet database macros, our collection of line items and attached F9 notes. Those are in the profile. Uh, and what I wanna talk about in this section is update of default profile settings. We've taken a look at the profile settings in Xactimate and made sure that they align with production. What is the reality of what restorers are facing in the field? Um, for example, some comparisons here between carrier specific profiles like the farmer's profile uh, the contractor default profile and the actionable profile. Um, looking at defaults, Xactimate defaults, by default, Xactimate does not deduct doors and windows. It does not. It does deduct all missing walls. Any missing wall, hallway, or like greater than zero square feet, it's going to deduct that from the calculation. What does this mean? When you put a window in a sketch in Xactimate's contractor profile, the defaults, that window is not deducted by the defaults. I'm sorry, not deducted from the wall calculations. Um, however, if you were to apply that window in a sketch in the farmer's profile, it is going to deduct that default three by five window, 15 square feet, from the, your wall calculations. Now, why do the defaults in Xactimate not deduct doors and windows? Because there's typically a trade-off between materials and labor. You're going to use less material. You're not painting over the window but it will take more labor to cut in around and paint correctly. So the defaults are there for a reason. Carrier specific profiles choose to deduct as they see fit as to if you wanna work uh, in their program environments, you use their profile and their settings. The actionable profile is a moderate hybrid of the two in the sense of we do not deduct doors and windows by default, but we are deducting missing walls greater than 24 square feet. If it's a big enough, bigger than a standard 6A26 door, then that's a missing wall that we're going to be deducting from wall calculations and alike. Additionally, things like flooring properties. The defaults in Xactimate have four fill pieces. But in reality, you'll see 
No homeowner really wants their flooring installed with four fill pieces like is shown here in the example picture. So thoughtfully, we've updated some flooring defaults to have things like two maximum fill pieces. That seems more reasonable and more in line with reality of how carpet installers and flooring installers would actually be using the scrap and the fill pieces to complete a room with minimal seams and obstructions in general. So now that we've taken a look at some of the default profile settings, hopefully you can see the thoughtfulness that we've tried to implement in reality. What do restorers and policyholders home have to do in order to execute uh, whatever job scope you're writing in Xactimate? Let's take a look at the second aspect of this, of this profile. This would be the inspection engine. So for those of you that have been going to hit complete and opening up the old inspection engine, I'll come here and hit to the old tab of come to complete and come to inspect. And you'll see here the old inspection engine. And in fact, you'll see a collection of our actionable alerts firing already providing live estimating guidance. I will get to these in a second. What I want to explain is something that's pretty brand new and one of the biggest updates to how Xactimate looks and functions in over a decade. I'm gonna to come to the right side here. Let's go to my estimate items tab, left side. Come over to the right side here. I'm gonna open up the new beta inspection results drawer. This is going to provide live estimating guidance uh, to based on the line items I've applied to the scope. So for example, I'm in my entryway foyer here. I have a collection of line items and you can see I have 18 actionable alerts to address in this room. Some are overage rules. So it looks like you may have done too much of something or you used two line items that are mutually exclusive. That's an overage. You may have made a mistake, right? Let's get that uh, addressed before you submit the scope to, uh, to, to the claim. On the flip side, we have omission rules, things that have never really existed before inside of the Xactimate inspection engine. These rules, overage and omissions, are only available in our profile. So you'll see here, for example, I have an omission rule. Baseboard paint grade may warrant corner blocks. I'm installing baseboard. I don't have any corner blocks. This is a good reminder for me to double check. Hey, does this property have any corner blocks? There is a particular line item for that that I would need to add into this main level entry foyer. Uh, things like sinks. I have sink activities in my plumbing activity section here, and it's saying I may need angle stops or supply lines. Even more typically, I have, uh, 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 this is actually a really interesting example for me because I got a reverse osmosis system with only one supply line. So it's indicating these rules of not only do you need potentially supply lines and angle stops, but typically we see two supply lines with various sinks. So it's, I only have one and it's reminding me, hey, you only have one, you may wanna double check that there. All right, uh, things like uh, here would be a great overage rule, uh, or you could even consider it an omission rule. I'm using high grade wood flooring but I'm using standard grade T molding. If I go down to my flooring section here, you can see I have uh, simulated wood flooring here and I've got average T molding here. So it's a good rule to remind me of, hey, typically your T molding quality will match your flooring quality. Double check to make sure you've selected for the right line item or maybe make a change before you submit this estimate to ensure that the grades various uh, the match. We also have estimate rules, not rules that aren't just specific to the room that you're working in, but overall things like, hey, you don't have any flooring protection in this estimate. But based on the scope of repairs in this particular repair ESX I'm working on here, you may need to add some flooring protection. You've got temporary toilets that are being deployed on this loss. If there are no facilities for your technicians, you may also need temporary hand washing stations as a part of the repair phase uh, to be able to deliver these things. Hey, you've invoiced for a Matterport scan via fee scan 3D. If you ordered any digital sketch assets like TruePlan, there's a line item fee SKTCH here that may be warranted to include in this particular scope. I'll pause there for a moment. Our goal is to create a sandbox for you to play in, right? What line items should you be using? What line items do not go together? All the little details that you've historically gone online or sought out a trainer for, or you're looking, you're looking around the office to see who's around me that knows this stuff that can answer these questions. We're taking our board's guidance and experience of how do these line items and Xactimate work together and giving it to you every day in the actionable profile via this live estimating guidance in the rural drawer. This is a big change. We've never had this type of guidance 
inside of the Xactimate software. There have been other third-party platforms that have popped up over the last you know, three to five years that have provided external guidance. Our goal was to you know, work with Verisk to build the Insight Sheet database into an actionable profile so that those of you insiders that are using our resources and participating with actionable insights have the opportunity to make less mistakes in every estimate and great reminders of what line items you should potentially include before you submit that scope to get, to get what most important, what's the most important, an accurate scope. What would we also like to solve? How fast you can get there. There's a huge problem with uh, back and forth, back and forth, negotiation, revision, revision. We want to help everyone get to the right scope the first time, less arguments, more settled claims. The actionable profile is the way that we will be doing that for the next decade of actionable insights careers over here. So um, hopefully this has been a good rundown for those of you that are curious about what is the actionable profile? What are we attempting to offer here? Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, hit us up, getinsights.org. Uh, you can email us at support at getinsights.org uh, with any questions and uh, hopefully your teams will have the chance to be getting this kind of live estimating guidance every day with the actionable profile very soon. All right. Thank you.